Hello, this video is in collaboration with Haikoki Tools, formerly known as Hitachi, a manufacturer of high quality tools with new innovations such as their multi-volt battery platform, which provides AC power with DC freedom. Haikoki have challenged myself and two other YouTube makers to make a project with limited tools. They are also offering you the chance to win three of the tools that I use in this video, a circular saw, a combi drill, and an impact driver, plus batteries and a charger. Stay tuned to find out how you can win those later in the video. Now, instead of just limiting myself to using a few tools, I'm going to take this one step further and I'm not going to allow myself to use my workshop either. I'm going to do everything in my garden with an old decrepit workmate and a couple of saw horses and that's because I want to demonstrate that you don't need a workshop nor do you need a table saw, track saw, mitre saw, band saw, planer, domino joiner or any of those wonderful machines that I use regularly in my videos in order to make things. And as is usually the case I'm going to be using salvage materials too. A while back I saw this solid oak kitchen worktop sitting by some bins in someone's garden so I knocked on the door, asked if it was being thrown away they said yes, so I swung by and picked it up in my van. This workshop had obviously not been cared for correctly as it had some really bad black water stains that I'd need to remove. I started by marking up where I wanted to make a rip cut through the oak. I bought a track saw recently, but I'm not going to be using that. Instead, I can get great results with my circular saw using a straight edge and a couple of clamps and some careful measuring. This 36 volt Haikoki saw has all the power of a corded saw. In fact, I think a lot of corded saws would struggle cutting through 40 mm thick solid oak, but the thin kerf blade in this saw coupled with the 36 volts of power got through it no problem. Next I want to clean up the oak and normally I might use my planer thicknesser for that, but I can get great results just by using my belt sander with an 80 grit belt, first working diagonally across the grain to help ensure it stays flat and then doing the final passes with the grain to help remove the sanding marks. Then I could use a large speed square to make cross cuts through the oak, first to get a perfect 90 degree end, and then to cut it to the size I wanted. These pieces of oak are going to be the tops for some cabinets, and I want to round over the edges. For that I'm using the router with a round over bit, and I did that to both the top and bottom of these tops. Then I did some finished sanding to remove any sanding marks left by the belt sander. This random orbit sander from Haikoki has a turbo switch which rotates the sanding pad at high speed and it really helps to speed up sanding, a job which most people love to hate. It also has variable speed and I turned the speed down low so that I could sand the roundovers carefully without removing too much material. Next I can make the carcass for the cabinet and for that I'm using some 18mm hardwood plywood which was left over from another project. I cut this in the same way using the circular saw and straight edge. For the cross cuts though I was a little bit worried about grain tearing out on the face veneer of this plywood so I added some masking tape to help hold it down. And those cuts came out really clean. With all the panels cut to size next I want to cut a taper to the side panels to give the unit a bit more character. First I placed the panels together flush and then I marked up the taper and clamped the pieces together. I'm going to be making multiple of these units at the same time so I decided to make a simple jig using some hot glue and some scraps of plywood which would help me to make repeatable consistent cuts. Here I'm making a test cut just to make sure that the jig is positioned correctly so that my blade is in line with my pencil line and it all looked good. So then I added a block to the back of the jig which will help me to butt it up to the edges each time consistently and then I could make the cuts, and the jig worked great. Here I'm marking up positions for some screws that I'm going to be adding through the bottom panel so that the screw heads won't be visible. I can then add wood glue. And then I drilled pilot holes with a countersinking bit and added some screws. While doing this I used a speed square just to check that the panels are at 90 degrees and then I can use the top panel which is this small one to get the positioning right for the next side panel. And then I can glue in that top panel. The reason this top panel is so small is because its only purpose is going to be to keep the unit square and hold the oak tops which I'll add later. I don't want it to be visible from the front of the cabinet so that's why I'm setting it in the middle at the top of the side panels. I added clamps and left it for a few hours for the glue to dry and then I could mark up for some dowels which are going to help reinforce these joints. I used some masking tape here which is going to help keep any glue squeeze out off the side panels. 
I used a brad points bit in my drill so that the holes were nice and clean and then I could glue in some 8mm dowels. I cut off the excess using my Japanese pull saw which works great to cut the dowels flush. And then using a sharp chisel I can pair the dowel ends nice and smooth. I sanded the carcasses by hand because I didn't want to risk sanding through the veneer which is quite easy to do with an electric sander. The plywood I'm using on this project isn't particularly good quality and there were some inconsistencies between the face veneers used on each of the pieces I was working with. So I decided to stain the plywood and for that I'm going to use some white stain. The reason I'm using stain instead of paint is because I still want it to look like wood. I want the grain to be visible through the stain. I used a paintbrush to apply the stain and the stain raised the grain of the wood a little so I used some 240 grit wet and dry paper to smooth it over and that also helped to even out the stain. To hide the plywood edges I'm going to be applying some oak iron on edge banding which will match the tops really nicely. The iron heats up the glue and then I can press it down firmly with an offcut of wood. I can then trim the ends with a knife and do a bit of sanding to refine the edges. I can then use my block plane to trim it to width, holding it at a slight angle so that I don't gouge away any of the plywood bottom panel. I wanted to make a leg base for the cabinets too, for that I'm going to be using some salvaged oak hat and coat stands. Regular viewers of my channel will be familiar with these as they've been featuring in my projects for a long time. I flushed up the edges using my speed square and then clamped them together and then I can mark up the length for the legs and cut them again using my speed square to guide the saw. These pieces of oak have fluted corners and I don't really like that look so I clamped them into my workmate and used my hand plane to bevel the corners instead. I also want to taper the legs. Ordinarily I'd use the band saw for that but today I'm going to use the belt sander clamped upside down in my workmate. This took quite a while but eventually they looked pretty good. I'd also need some apron rails to join the legs together and I could use more of the oak worktop to make those but I wanted to avoid these finger joints which join the end grain of the oak staves together as much as possible. I'd rather use the bits without these joints in. After marking up the thickness of the rails that I wanted I made a series of cuts to get the best material possible for the rails. I then needed to cut those to length and again I'm using some clamps and a speed square for that too. I marked up which legs I wanted where and also where I wanted the joinery for the apron rails just so I wouldn't get confused and cut the joints in the wrong place. And then I spent some time marking up where I would add dowels which is what I'm going to be using for the joinery. Usually I'd use my domino mortiser for this kind of thing, but dowels are just as strong, they just take a little bit of extra effort to set up and get accurate, and I used my marking knife and a combination square for that. Now I did venture into the workshop for a little while because it started raining and at this point in the project I just wanted to get this done, but I could have easily done this in my workmate had it not been for the rain. I could then drill the holes using a brad point bit, being careful to hold the drill perfectly upright at 90 degrees, and the masking tape that I've added onto the drill bit helps me to drill to the correct depth for the length of the dowels. Then I had a visitor. Can I help you? I could then glue in all the dowels and start to assemble the leg frame. I managed to get most of the joints together just with my mallet, but one of them needed a little extra force, so I used clamps to pull it all together for tight joints, and I also clamped it down to a flat surface to make sure that all of the legs would be level. I could then check the measurements from corner to corner to see if it was square and the measurements were close enough so I left it for the glue to dry. Once dry I centred it to the bottom of the carcass just by eye and then drilled some pilot holes through the rails into the bottom panel and used some 50mm screws to secure it in place. I didn't use glue here as I want the option of removing the leg base so that it's easier to ship as these units are going to be available for sale on my online Etsy store and there's a link to that in the description. I also drilled some pilot holes in the top panel for securing the oak tops. Because these holes will be quite central to the oak tops they will allow the wood to move as it expands and contracts with seasonal changes. 
I used some 40mm screws to secure the tops in place. I could then blow away all of the dust ready for finish to be applied. And I'm going to be using some water based varnish. Usually I'd just brush it on and denib between coats but because I made three of these units I decided to set up my paint sprayer just to save time. I'm using varnish here because it's hard wearing so it'll protect the wood from things like moisture and it also adds a nice satin sheen. I left the first coat to dry and then sprayed on a little water so that I could wet sand at 400 grit to denib the finish and get everything nice and smooth. And then I could wipe away the slurry and apply the next coat. I added my maker's mark to the bottom of each unit. And finally I wanted to add a back panel. After removing the tops I clamped on a piece of wood to help support the base of my router so that I could route out a rebate for the back panel to sit in. I used a chisel to square up the round corners left by the router bit. And then I added glue and added a 3mm plywood back panel which I'd already cut to size with the circular saw. And I secured that in place with some pin nails. And then I could refit the tops and that was the units finished. These units were designed to fit these cushions which I bought online so that they can be used as cat beds. And here you can see my cat Dylan modelling one of the beds. But they're kind of multifunctional because they'd also make great bedside tables or cabinets to hold vinyl or books. They're now available for sale on my Etsy store and you can find a link to that in the description box below. As mentioned at the start of the video, this project is in collaboration with Hikoki. I've been using Hitachi and Hikoki tools for over a year now. I've said in the past that you don't need high quality tools to make great things and I really believe that, but for me, transitioning from making things as a hobby to making commissions and items for sale professionally, there's a certain standard of performance and reliability that I want from my tools and I've been more than happy with all of the Hikoki tools I have used and I haven't encountered a single issue with any of them either even after much use and abuse. If you'd like to be in with a chance to win a circular saw, combi drill and impact driver plus batteries and a charger click the Instagram link in the description box below this video give Hikoki tools a follow and comment hashtag make a giveaway and also tag a friend in the post this is open to anyone worldwide, although you may have to source your own plug adapter depending on the country that you are in. Also in the description box you can find links to the limited tool builds by Chris Salomon of Four Eyes Furniture and Mike from Industrial Maker. Both fantastic makers, so I'd highly recommend checking out their project videos. I want to say a big thank you to Hikoki for helping to support my channel and also the maker community as a whole. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. You can also support the channel on Patreon if you'd like to receive early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.